Hey there, it's Stephanie Shea, Chief Astrologer for JanSpiller.com. And I'm here with a review of a very unique astrological calendar that was developed by my coworker, KJ Atlas. She works with me at the Jan Spiller website. Uh, she does all our social media. So it makes sense that she would think of something um, kind of in the digital world. She's also Gemini. And I really haven't ever seen a calendar like this. So I thought I would share it with you, show you some of my favorite features and just let you know how you can get one for yourself. <laughs> like me, KJ was an astrologer looking for a calendar that could help them track the moon, planetary cycles, and important astrological transits. And she really wasn't finding the one thing to meet her needs. And so um, she created it. <laughs> it took her years of astrological study, um, her horoscope writing, birth chart sessions, all of this contributed to the knowledge that she has. And she came up with a digital Google calendar, which I think is kind of brilliant because then it's always available. You could be out, you can pop it open on your phone. You don't have to carry around some printed thing. Um, and so this is really handy. And it doesn't just tell you what's going on, but it tells you what to do to make the best of it. And that's Jan Spiller's philosophy, by the way, also, that's how I've been trained. Um, you know, it doesn't help to tell people that there might be an anxious energy in the air and then just leave them hanging. You know, it's like, well, what are some things to do to ground yourself? So um, this calendar she designed is designed with the beginner astrology lover in mind. And it also has enough um, perks and specific details for master astrologers. I'm personally using it. So I don't have to like pull out my hard copy calendar and double check if there's something that might not be astrologically favorable for a meeting I'm planning, for example. So the, th the important thing to know is this is human <laughs> developed. <laughs> there's no AI involved. This is personal, hard earned insights um, that that come along with, and, and that seems harder to come by these days, but um, yes, this is how KJ is doing it. So let me pull up my screen and I will show you what it looks like. Let's see. Okay, so here it is. Um, this imported, once you order the calendar, it imports right into your google calendar um so right away it's it's you don't have to worry how do i set this up all of a sudden you open your google calendar there it is um and it's it's very handy so there's notes here mercury retrograde pre-shadow begins well that's interesting uh, maybe somebody wasn't aware there's a pre-shadow and a post-shadow i talk about this sometimes in my forecasts but this is giving you the date and time that it's happening. And it's a very thorough description. So um, this is going to really help, you know, on a practical level, know exactly how to work with this. And I also really like that KJ has a poetic aesthetic. And for each astrological event, she includes sensory details. So you're going to find you know, practical tips here, Mercury's effects are often strains and confusion around communications and technology, okay? And so you're getting the rundown, but then for the people that really appreciate more of a poetic approach, tastes like sulfur, smells like incoming rain, sounds like wind in the distance. And we get to interpret that poetry as we will for ourselves. And I think that helps really set this calendar apart and make it unique. So it's it's all compact and neat until you open one of the, the screens, then you get lots and lots of information. Um, so if you wanted to know, when does the moon go into Leo, for example, 
Um, well, you'll find out, you know, when will the sun enter Aries? Okay, it's right here. Um, and here's all the things that it means. And this calendar is kind of Aries oriented, right? So if I flip back, there's nothing really going on before Aries season. And that was very intentional. So um, this will go all the way through um, Aries season of 2025. And that makes it, you know, following the astrological year, not just the calendar year. I think one of the best things about this is that um, it really explains things for newbies. So somebody who's knowledgeable would see Venus conjunct Saturn and go, ha, 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 I know what that means. And uh, that would be nothing that is meaningless to somebody else. And that's what happens on a lot of these calendars. And not only that, it just like shows these symbols that beginners can't even decipher. So they wouldn't even necessarily know what the Venus or the Saturn meant. Well, here it is, super easy, Venus conjunct Saturn in Pisces. While Venus loves to be in Pisces, Saturn is a bit strange here. The plan of structure and discipline, Saturn and the sign of trust and intuition takes on an odd flavor. Um, one that wants to teach us a collective lesson of trust the process. So you can see it, it's going super in depth. I mean, you're almost getting a reading. It's not personal to your chart. But you're getting so in touch with what the general astrological mood of that day is going to be that that can help inform you of how you may want to proceed with certain interactions, certain plans, this type of thing. Um, generally, people try to avoid making plans during what's called the void moon because that's sort of a empty zone. I, I like to think of it as a mini Mercury retrograde. And all it is, is when the moon has made its last aspect to any planet in that sign. So here it would be in Virgo. It's waiting to move into Libra, as you can see. So I think that's pretty cool that, you know, if anything planned during the void moon phase really is not scheduled to go anywhere. Um, well, if there's something you don't want to go anywhere, <laughs> I notice KJ advises, hey, go ahead and schedule it during the void moon, and then you won't have to worry about it again. But for most people, if they're trying to make sure a date goes well or a specific event that they're planning a party, you know, you would probably not want to schedule it during the void moon. And this way, you, again, you don't have to pull out any other calendars, do any mathematical calculations. It's right there on your Google calendar. So I think these are, you know, the the biggest highlights of my feature, you know, of what I love about this calendar, all these features. And it, as I said, it goes all the way through the beginning of the next astrological year. You might be wondering, okay, I think I'm in. How do I get the Grove Almanac? Well, it's simple. You just go to this website, kjatlas.com, and you can watch a video she made telling you more about it and order it here. Um, and, you know, it's instant. You don't have to wait for anything to be shipped to you. And I highly, highly recommend it. I was so excited when KJ created this. I knew that I was going to make a video to share it with the rest of you because I think a lot of you viewing here will also find this calendar, this online calendar, super useful. All right. Thanks and have a great rest of your day.